Welcome to the first episode of Hunt Over Help Center. Today we're going to be going over how to acoustically treat your room. Whether you're someone who just tracks um, or someone who mixes as well. I do both in the same room. We're going to go through all of that. So take what you will from it. Um, basically I just have a basic studio here. If you look right over here, uh, this is my mix center. This is something we're going to be heavily treating. And then to the right is the mic area. Now I chose to put it here. Basically, what you need to do is when you first get your mic, you need to record in several different spots of the room. Record the same verse, the same guitar, whatever you record, and see what sounds good, just dry as it is. Alright, what you're going to need for today is, of course, you're going to need the foam. I'll be showing the link where I got the foam and describing it as we go each piece. Now, you can choose to just treat a certain part of your room. I'll show you the more important ones. I went all out, and I'm completely treating the whole room. I think all together, I'm in about $350. Uh, for the foam itself. Um, here's what you're going to need right here. These are little Velcro circles, you know, self-adhesive. I have that, and then I have just the rolls. You'll need that, scissors, tape, and of course the foam. Okay, the first thing we're going to be going over is your corner base traps or your base wedges. Now, this isn't so much for your recording, this is more for when you're mixing. Um, when your audio gets played back, all that bass and all that muddiness it gets trapped here in the corners. Uh, specifically at the top and the bottom is where everything gets trapped. The problem that develops is that when you're mixing, you're hearing a bass that isn't real, whether it's too little or too much. That's why a lot of you, when you take your mixes, you put it in your car, you put it in your stereo, it doesn't sound the same. This is the point of treating the mix area, so you're hearing the actual mixes. Same reason why you have studio monitors, same reason why you have monitor headphones. You want to hear the actual mix and you don't want to hear your room. Okay, what we're gonna do is, like I said, I'm gonna cover the tops and bottoms. So we're gonna be putting a set of these in each of the corners, top and bottom. Okay, typically, like I said, I'm gonna be treating the tops and bottoms. Now, this is in my mix area. It's really not ideal to be in a corner, but you work with what you have. Nothing's gonna be perfect in a project studio. So for this one, I will be putting one on top, bottom. I'll also be putting one in the center which will almost completely cover this now ideally you kind of want to cover all of your corners and then you can also put these base traps up here like this which is something I'll be doing in the future but not right now in this video you could line the whole ceiling as well as that but if you're on a budget I just stick to your tops and your bottoms I got these um, they sell for about 25 a piece I found a site I'll be putting that in there that 12 bucks a piece I think so it's not bad. I got eight of them, uh, you know, it's hundred bucks or so just for the wedges. But like I say, uh, it'll pay off in the end. Okay. Um, for these, I'm going to be using the strips. I don't trust the little circles on it. And what I say to do is we'll be putting about, I don't know, probably about eight to 12 inches. We're going to do one strip here, one strip here. Then we're going to do the same on the other side. That way, when you put them up, it's going to fit tight and these corners aren't going to be able to pop out like this. I'm staring at my KRKs, they make me sound just like a rocket. Overly exhausted like George Jetson, sick of selling space leaks rocket. God knows I'm off my rocket. Guess you would say I'm a broken product. Like it was a prophet who picked pockets and blesses people for fucking the bus. Okay. And they do face different directions, the, um, the wedges. Honestly, I do not know what the significance is of having them face either direction. So I'm just going to kind of rotate them. I'll put one up here, let's say this way. Then maybe that corner I do the opposite. All right. Got to make sure you go all the way up to the ceiling. Or it ain't going to do no good. Okay, we've gotten all eight of our base traps up. Uh, as you can see, like I said, we put them towards the ceiling. This one would not need a second one because the couch works as one. Um, if you look over here in this corner, we did top bottom. We also did top bottom over here by the mic. And over here in the corner, it's really not ideal to put your monitors in the corner, but it's where I'm at. So what I did was I stacked three. So that whole area is gonna be caught. Don't worry about the little gap. I mean, that's gonna catch everything. So all my corners are covered right now. All right, what we're gonna do next is called first reflection. This is very important for the mix process. As you can see where I'm at with my monitors, it makes a triangle, okay? And I'm right in the sweet spot, I'm right in the middle. First reflection is gonna be the spot on the wall 
where um, where your music first hits. You need to put something there to absorb it. You need to put a piece of foam, um, something to take care of that. There is an easy way to figure that out. Um, it involves a mirror, and I'm going to show it to you now. Okay. I am sitting in my mix position in the sweet spot. What you're going to do is have your buddy grab a little mirror, and you're going to have him move around until you see your face. All we need is soap in a world so gone. All we need is soap so we can carry on. All we need is soap. Lift your head to the sky and know that you can change the world if you just try. Right there. Okay, you guys see my face? That's going to be my first reflection on the right-hand side. Okay, so we need, definitely need to put something there to where the sound doesn't bounce back in. Okay, the whole point of putting this foam up here is basically, I described the bass traps. We're moving on to the actual foam panels, the acoustic panels. When the sound hits, it's going to bounce. So I told you about first reflection point. It's going to bounce off that point. It's going to bounce everywhere. It's going to bounce back here. It's going to bounce again. It's going to bounce again. It's going to go both ways. And then you're hearing a manipulation of the sound. You're not hearing what it really is. And that is our goal to hear what our tracks sound like so we can mix properly. Next, we're going to be treating the area right behind your monitors, um, your computer monitor. That whole area is going to need to be treated. So what I've done is I've ordered these sets off eBay. They're $30 a piece. One set is all this you see. They're three inches thick, you got wedge and you got square, and they form a pattern. You don't have to go with the pattern, you can go with whatever, I just want it to look a little nicer. So like I say, it's 30 bucks a piece, I got three of them, um, two for behind the mixing station, and one more for this wall over here. So that's, uh, that's 90 bucks, and to me it was worth it just to kind of have the cool design, and it's three inch foam, so it's, it's ideal. And I mean, when you get your foam, you need to check to see how how much pressure it takes to squeeze it in. If it's a little bit, it's garbage and it ain't gonna do much. This shit has real good resistance. Like I say, it's three inch foam plus the circles and even the wedges. The wedges are just supreme. Um, if anybody wants, leave a comment and I'll uh, send you a link to the uh, eBay store I got it from. All right. Now what I've done is I went ahead and went with the uh, little pieces of Velcro. The little circles didn't really work. I got a bad batch. The adhesive on them is crap. Okay, so I've done the same thing. I put both A and B side of the Velcro on one, two, three, and four sides. So we're just going to place her on the wall. I'm lining up with the piece of trim to the left and then the uh, piece of trim on the top. Give her a good push. Make sure we're up. And we'll know in a minute if it'll stay, but that son of a bitch ought to stay. Next, we'll do the same with these, thus forming the pattern. It'll be a total of nine, uh, nine panels to do this pattern. Then we'll have another nine here, and then I have one more set that I'll either put here or maybe on the back wall. All right, as you can see, we put in the, uh, the Velcro on the back of each of these nine sheets, making the pattern three foot by three foot square. Now I'd like to say, if you're on a budget, you don't have to go this far. I just wanted to do it once and get it done. In reality, you could probably put a couple, let's say 12 by 24 pieces, one right here, one right here, and one directly behind your monitor. That would do you and you'll notice a difference, but like I say, I wanted to do the whole thing and just get it done. All right, now we're going to move on over here and this pattern is gonna follow all the way through it's gonna follow all the way through to the base traps on the right, on the left, right there. Okay, as you can see, we got our second set over here done. That's a second set of nine, so we put up 18 panels. Probably took me about an hour, hour and a half to do. It's pretty time consuming, cutting the Velcro into the little squares, what have you. But there we have you. Uh, we're pretty well done behind the mix station. I was thinking I might put a couple uh, 12 by 12 square piece here, square piece here. You really just want to focus on this area, this area, then directly behind your monitor, the area in between your, your speakers, your studio monitors. Okay, we're at the start of day two of acoustically treating the room. My previous dealings with this foam, I had had paneling and not the uh, sheetrock. Well, I came in today and I saw that most of the panels, about half of them, had fallen down. The backs of the sticky on the Velcro would not adhere to the actual walls. So, I'm going to give everybody a couple more options. 
What you can do, especially if you're just doing a small area, is that you can take some thin plywood, a little something a little thicker than cardboard, and you can glue the foam onto that, then hang it like a picture. Also, if you look online, you will see little brackets you can buy. They're about this big, the range to about this big, and they have little barbs on them. And then you basically just hang it like you would a jacket on a hook. Once again, if you're doing something small, that's great. With me, I'm going to have to do in here what I didn't want and lay the glue down. So I have some uh, 3M general purpose glue. Uh, you get it at Walmart, about five bucks. Now this is going to permanently adhere it to the wall. If you don't own your home, I wouldn't advise doing this. I would advise trying one of the other ways and then just following the same principles. Um, if you do have to remove it, remove it, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take a blow dryer and you're going to want to hold it to the back side of the foam, get it real hot, that's going to loosen up the glue. Then you're going to need to take a putty knife, anything small, a spatula, and scrape that off of there. If you get it hot enough, you'll get it off at least enough that it can be reused, but there will be some residue left on the walls that you'll have to take care of after that. So, like I say, if you don't own your home, I don't advise doing that, but that's what we're going to do just because me hanging the brackets would take so long. All right, I think next we're going to move on to the area behind the mic. Now, a general rule of thumb for your mixed area is that you want 60 to 70% coverage on the walls. Okay? But when you're doing the area where the mic is, you want as much as you can. I mean, really, ideally, you would have a vocal booth. Vocal booth would be 100% line, and you would have a complete dead room. So we're going to manipulate that as we move on to the mic area, and we're going to lay a whole bunch of foam in the little area. This is the area where I'm putting my mic. As you can see, it's formed a little nook. I have this wall here, and when the door shut, I'll have this right here. Like I say, you want close to 100% coverage as you can. What I'm basically going to do is probably go about three four feet to each side of the mic you'll want to start acoustically treating a foot to two foot from the ceiling as well as on the floor you know two feet's a good rule of thumb but uh, my mic is standing so tall that i'm gonna have to start a foot at from the top just to make sure that we have good coverage we have the bass traps in the corner and uh here we go okay as we do the mic area what i have is i have 12 inch foam just a square foot. I have both maroon and I have charcoal. That way I can fit just a nice little pattern. And I'm gonna cover everything from probably here all the way over to the base traps down to about here. Now, if you don't want the nice little pattern and you just kinda wanna get it done, what you could do, this is about four foot by two foot, and you could do with just a couple of these. Now these four foot by two foot ones I believe they're about $15 a piece. You could just put a couple right here and right here. Boom, have that area done and treated in five minutes. I wanna go for a little bit more showmanship on it. So we're gonna cover it with, hell, probably about 30 of these or so. Uh, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and wind up using the glue because the Velcro is not adhering to the drywall. Also, these panels I had gotten, once again, on an eBay auction. Um, they come in sets of 12, so you get six maroon, six charcoal, uh, $30, I think it's $10 shipping, and if you order more than one set, it's still just $10 shipping. I ordered four sets, so 48 square feet, uh, just to make sure I'd have enough. If I didn't, I didn't. Once again, if you're interested in these two, you could look them up yourself on eBay, or if you leave a comment, I will uh, do my best to find the eBay store and just send a direct link underneath. In Moonshots, American as apple pie, or foul ball, that's not the baseline. Exes on the jugs, you know it's mine. Know it's mine. Drink too much, Lala, Lala, telling you I love this feeling that I get when the truck pulls in. Calling up everyone, I know it's time for the weekend to begin. Hillbilly Pop is what we call it, made by the cats you call out loud. Late night runs, drunk stuff, full of illegal alcohol. Over here on the door, I could treat it with several different things, but that is what I got the big four foot by two foot pieces. I bought two of these. I have two doors, an entry door and a closet door. Both of those, I will be putting these pieces of foam on. All right, that covers this area. Pretty damn good. Now we're gonna move on to just other aspects. Now, uh, what we're gonna move on to is gonna be more of the mixing. When your sound comes out of your monitors, we talked about first reflection, but there's more than that. 
your sound is going to be hitting the back wall. Coming back over here, of course, I have this foam to absorb it. So I'm going to need to put some on the back wall to do the same. Now we're going to cover the closet door just like we did the other one with one of these four foot by two foot pieces of foam. Um, these are ones I'd gotten from the actual website that I got the corner base traps from. Um, I can go ahead and put the, I'll put the link below of where they're at, how to get a hold of them, you know. Real simple stuff. Laying on the gurney, I think that man he's turning blue. I drove drunk, woke up, man was on the news. But I powered through it with the courage of a lion. Told the wizard to keep it skipped and watch that bitch go quiet. All right, what this wall is right here, this is directly behind the mixing station that we had first treated. What I mean is when I'm sitting down, my back is facing here. So everything that's coming out of the speakers, they're hitting first reflection point, they're bouncing around, they're gonna bounce off here and they're gonna come right back into my ear. We don't want that. We do that, everything's pointless. Um, like I say, we're not trying to get a soundproof room. We're not trying to get some special effect. We're trying to hear what exactly is coming out of the monitors and not any kind of reverberation from your room. A uh, quick way to test how bad your room is, just to clap. You can hear a little echo. Even with the room half treated, I hear a difference, but there's a little flood or echo. We're gonna use the three inch foam that we used on the front. I like the idea of having it back to back, but we don't have enough room to do the um, 36 inches square because of this piece of trim. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a pattern of two, and then I'll probably do it three down. All right, as you can see, we covered the back area. I put the foam down so low. One of these right here, just because that'll be directly behind my head. I might even add a couple more right here. I hit up top. Then I hit this wall. Now all that's really left is to come over here and hit this last wall right here. Okay. The way I'm deciding where to put everything here is you gotta think, I'm sitting right here. To the right of me is the mic area that's completely covered. But when you're low and you're sitting, right at your ear level needs to be covered just so nothing hits and reflects back in. So my ear level is going to be about right here. So what we're gonna do is, I think I have about a dozen panels left. I'm probably gonna put about nine, eight or nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Something like that, just kind of covered this whole area right here. Half the shit I do is just to piss off local rappers. I'm raining on, they parade that natural road disaster. You little scaredy bears, just a bunch of whippersnappers. Now look into my eyes, you just met a kidnapper. All you do is sit on Facebook talking shit. 20 posts a day about how you gonna make it big. Okay, and we are done now. I'm gonna give you a nice 360. Here's your mix area corner base traps first reflection I'm gonna come over to here corner base traps it's another reflection for right behind me base traps door little foam and then of course the mic area which uh, I think everything came out pretty well uh, minus having to use the the glue which I did not want to do um, like I say, all in all, I'm in at about 350. I'll uh, put links in the description. If you know a cheaper way or if you do it differently, that's cool. I'm, I'm not a professional, but uh, I have done my research and thought maybe I could save one of y'all having to do as much research as I did. So this is Travesty with the Hunover Help Center signing out. And if there's uh, anything else y'all would like to know, uh, how to EQ, how to use compression, anything else, maybe we'll do another one of these. Just uh, let me know. Peace.